So my last little mini review of a window manager was Qtile, and I still have one or two Qtile videos that I want to do, but that's for later in the month. I've moved on now to a new window manager, and I've been using it now for a few days. That window manager is Sway WM. Now I took this as a challenge from one of my supporters, and I want to say thank you, Josh, for supporting me and uh, sponsoring this challenge, but uh, also... Thank you, Josh. <laughs> okay, so I've been using Sway Window Manager for a few days, about a week, off and on. Mostly in the last two or three days have I really gotten into it, and I have some thoughts. These are my initial impressions. I'm going to be using this for at least a month, and I'll probably make two or three videos on it during that time period. So just to start off with some initial impressions i'm going to do this in two different sections the first i'm going to be talking about my impressions of sway itself and then i'm going to be talking a little bit about wayland because sway is at its heart a wayland compositor or a wayland window manager however you want to say it now there are some things that i'm going to say right off the top here i do not have my terminology down correctly quite yet there are some things that i'm still trying to get into my head because there are differences when it comes to what I'm used to. So for example, I'm used to, you know, X11 or Xorg being a display server. Wayland is kind of analogous to that, but it has de several different parts to it. And I'm still learning those things. So let's go ahead and first start off with my impressions of Sway. So let me show you what my Sway window manager looks like right now. This is what mine looks like right now. And I haven't done too much to it over the last week or so. I've been trying to use it as stock as possible outside of the bar. But for the most part, even the bar is as stock as it comes. Because this is Waybar and it's the one that they recommend that you use. It's kind of like Polybar. I'll talk about that later. So basically, I've just been using Sway in its stock configuration as much as possible. I've changed a few key bindings that I'm more familiar with. So for example, I've changed the kill window to mod Q instead of mod plus C, or maybe mod plus Q, I can't remember which the default one was, but it was mod, mod shift Q. The, so I've changed things like that and I've changed the wallpaper. So I, if I show you the wallpaper, this is what, you know, I've, ch I've changed the wallpaper. I had to learn how to change the wallpaper because it's not the same process. It's a little bit different. You can do it in a couple different ways. You can, use a program like I IMV to change the wallpaper, which is what I ended up doing, or you can actually just provide a path to your specific wallpaper in the configuration file. It's kind of the ability just to set your wallpaper directly in the configuration file, whereas in i3, you need a program to do it, like Fay or you know Nitrogen or something like that. With i3, you can just use the output command, which is really kind of nice. So, there are a couple things that I need to talk about when it comes to Sway itself that are a little bit confusing. So if you go to the Sway website, you'll see that they claim that the configuration for Sway is a one-to-one, -one, or at least almost one-to-one -one replacement for i3. So you're supposedly be able to take an i3 configuration file and drop it into your Sway configuration file, and it will just work. This is almost true. And when I say it's almost true, it it really does work for the most part, but there's a few things that just don't work. So first off, there are still some old rules that I use in my i3 config that are depreciated. That One of them is the one that removes the title bar at the top of the, the windows. There's a new way of doing that. I haven't switched over to it in my new i3 configuration file yet. So when I switched, moved my i3 config over to Sway, I got an error. So that was one way that it wasn't a one-to-one -one drop in replacement. Another one, and it's a bigger one, is scratch pads. So if I search for scratch pads here, the base level scratch pad functionality from i3 to Sway would probably work. If all you do is move a window that you spawn manually to a scratch pad and then try to bring it back, that's fine, but that's not the way that I have my scratch pads working. Instead, I have my scratch pads spawn at startup and are hidden. So they are automatically in the scratch pad space. That doesn't particularly work. 
they do spawn at startup, but they won't stay hidden and they won't stay centered at startup. It's a little weird. I haven't figured out the reason why that's the case yet. Apparently, the way centering works in Sway is a little bit different than the way it is in i3. I haven't figured out that difference yet. That's something that I'm going to have to work on. Another thing is it doesn't seem to want to start up a window inside of the scratch pad space. It just starts it up as a window on your, you know, like a visible window. So I'm not sure, again, why that is, but it's definitely different than i3, which seems to work just fine. So that's those are two differences or two things that were hurdles to moving an i3 configuration file to Sway. For the most part, though, all of the configuration syntax and stuff like that is mostly the same. So if you've configured i3 before, configuring Sway is going to be mostly the same. And it was not hard. So I've just kind of switched back to the default Sway configuration file for now and abandoned mine because mine has a whole bunch of scratch pads and stuff like that and I don't have the regular key bindings in my i3 config all of my i3 configuration key bindings and stuff that move windows around move between workspaces all that stuff is in sxhkd and sxhkd does not work in sway so I wasn't able to really use my configuration because I don't have any of this stuff inside of my configuration file so I would have to take all this stuff out, put it in my configuration file. At that point, I might as well just use the default configuration and kind of go on from here. So that's what I plan on doing. My initial impressions, my initial thoughts on Sway is that it works basically like i3. And the one-to-one -one comparison between i3 and Sway is pretty good. The way you work with Windows is exactly the same. Moving between different layouts is exactly the same, so you can do mod V, and then you, you can change the direction the windows spawn, things like that. If you've used i3, using Sway is pretty much the same. Where that changes is with the bar. So I'm not actually sure what the default bar looks like. I never actually used it because they tell you to use Waybar in the configuration documentation. So I immediately enabled Waybar. So you enable Waybar just by installing Waybar, obviously. And then in the bar section at the bottom, you do the Swaybar underscore command Waybar. And Waybar is what you see at the top. Now, Waybar is kind of like Polybar. And it's a very loose comparison. So Polybar is very easy to configure. It's a very much an i3-like configuration file. It's a uh, user readable configuration file. If I were to show you the Waybar configuration file, it looks like this. And as you can see, this is not a user readable configuration file. It's not hard once you kind of get used to it, but there's random things in here that's a little bit weird. So uh, for example, comments are two backslashes and that takes some getting used to. Also, everything's in quotation marks and I mean, Everything is in quotation marks, even like the first part of the setting thing is in, in quotation marks, and then the second part is in quotation marks, and then there's brackets for whatever reason. It's not a very pretty configuration file, but that's not that big of a deal. But it also means that it's kind of messy. So there's a lot of quotation marks, there's a lot of brackets, when it really feels like you're wondering why there's both of those things, if that makes sense, right? When you see a regular configuration file, seeing both of those things together doesn't at least correlate for me personally. So it looks a little weird. And it is a little bit, I don't know, it's just a little bit confusing. So the way it works is that it has the Modules at the bottom of the configuration file where it basically has the settings for each module. And then at the top of the configuration file, you have this section right here, which is basically the part of the polybar configuration where you're listing where the modules are supposed to be. So you have left, center, right. And that allows you to basically list the modules that you want to have in the bar. And it works fairly well. But again, there's quotation marks all over the place and it it just bugs me. <laughs> like I, so if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you know that I like making my configuration files like really, really short. So I like as few lines as possible in my configuration files. And I don't really prefer configuration files that require a ton of quotation marks, a ton of brackets and stuff like that. I don't really like that kind of thing. Now, 
I could see if it was actually written in a programming language, like in C or Haskell or Python or, you know, Lua or something like that. All of those things have rules when it comes to quotation marks, brackets, parentheses, things like that, right? You expect that stuff in a programming language. This doesn't look like a programming language to me. It just looks like a polybar configuration, mostly, but with a whole bunch of syntax things that just don't really make sense to me. So I haven't discovered why this is particularly the way that they that they do it, but that's definitely something I'm going to look into because I'm very curious as why they've made such a messy configuration file. Also, haven't figured out where they do the colors yet. I just got into messing around with Waybar today, so I haven't made that step yet. I don't see any colors in this particular configuration file, so I'm guessing that those are somewhere else, obviously. So that those are my initial impressions of Sway. It's basically i3, works fairly well. But that's really the lower level of the thing that I'm doing here, because this is my first true experience of living and working in Wayland. And I have had thoughts about Wayland many times over the last two years. I've tried to use it before, and I've always come away with the thoughts that it's just not ready. Usually that's because screen capture in OBS was garbage. And for the most part, I was right. Screen capture in OBS was garbage up until about six months ago. Apparently OBS got their crap together and it now works fairly well, as you have seen, or at least hopefully have seen. It would be hilarious if I record this whole video and it didn't work. Um, that has happened to me before recently on KDE Wayland. So hopefully what I just showed you all showed up in the video. I'll have to check that when I'm you know editing. So I want to talk a little bit about Wayland and my experiences so far with Sway, which is a Wayland compositor, Wayland window manager, whatever. There are some things that have been pretty good. So no screen tearing out of the box, which is nice. That's always something that I have to fix on Xorg. That's one good thing. Things like blur and anything you'd usually get with like PyCom seem to be something that you can use inside of Wayland without having to have something like PyCon, which is nice. Haven't figured out how to configure that yet, but the way bar at the top is transparent. So the fact that that is something that you could do by default is kind of nice. The biggest issue I have and the biggest issue that I've experienced over the last week or so, specifically when I initially first set it up, is that there is an alternative to everything that you have to have or most things, I should say. And it felt very much like I was switching from Windows to Linux. When you switch from Windows to Linux, you have to look for alternatives to the software that you used on Windows. You have to find a new graphics editor. You have to find a new audio interface. You have to find a new terminal, probably. You know, you have to go through and find alternatives to everything that you used to use. It's kind of the same when you switch from Xorg to Wayland. You have to find alternatives to many things that you used to use. So... Uh, something as simple as like SXIV, if you use that to view images in the terminal, you can't use that anymore because that's an X org application. So you have to use something like IMV. Uh, something like Rofi does work. So that was a surprise to me, but it doesn't work well. At least for me so far, way, uh, Rofi has been giving me some issues. Specifically, the problem I've been having is that it appears on the wrong monitor. Like, it doesn't really seem to know what monitor that is in focus, and it always appears on the other one, which is really weird. Another thing that you have to kind of learn how to redo is take screenshots. Something like Flameshot doesn't work on Wayland, or at least it didn't work for me. Uh, and you have to choose something different to use in order to take screenshots. There's these little things, right? It's never anything like big, like your terminal's going to work, OBS works, Audacity works, Firefox work, all that stuff works just fine, at least so far for me. It's when you get into the little things, the stuff that, you know, you'd use in order to do certain things like screenshotting and setting a wallpaper and stuff like that, where you have to kind of find alternatives, discover a different way of doing things. And that's not a bad thing like it's something that I'm willing to do but it felt like you're using something completely different in certain areas at least right it's just it made me feel like there were certain things that were just it was like I'm on a different operating system because I have to find an alternative to all the stuff that I'm used to using that no longer works 
I think that that may be the biggest downfall of Wayland right now is that you kind of the, the there's no inner compatibility. Now I know that X Wayland exists. Uh, X X Wayland is a like a compatibility layer. I'm sure that's not really what it's called, but it's a it's something like that where you can use Xorg applications in Wayland. Right, that's the goal behind X Wayland. But I don't know if that's something you have to set up or if it's automatic or what. I haven't really done a lot of research into it yet, so I'm not sure how you're supposed to go out using that to get some Xorg application is like say Flameshot to actually work. And um, maybe you don't have to do anything. Maybe it's supposed to work or maybe I'm just doing something wrong. It's completely possible. I'm a complete noob when it comes to Wayland, so I'm still learning. But it feels like there's stumbling blocks there. The real challenge is going to be Steam because I know that that uses X, X Wayland. So we'll have to see how that works. I haven't even opened Steam yet, so I don't know how well it'll work or if it'll work at all. That'll be an interesting... A challenge as we go forward. So my initial impressions of Sway and Wayland together is that it's better than I thought it would be. Honestly, I wasn't worried about the window manager itself. It's basically just i3. You can do all the things that you would do in i3 inside of Sway. I wasn't worried about that. I was scared to death of Wayland and it's been better than I thought it would be. So overall, I'm okay. The question I have to answer over this next month is why? Like what exactly does Wayland offer me the XOR doesn't and so far I haven't found that answer yet there has been nothing that has stood out to me inside of this Wayland experience that has said you know this is you know better than XORG so so far just have not seen that so we'll have to see so that is it for this video so if you have thoughts on Sway you can leave those in the comment section below you can follow me on Master on our Odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thanks so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. I'm speaking loudly and fastly because it looks like we're going to lose light. So I want to get this done before we do that. Anyways, thanks for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.